Hey guys, welcome back to Pillbox Movies. I'm Hank, and today we're watching the 1976 Spanish drama uh, Crie Cuervos. This is a film by director Carlos Sora. Sara is one of my most well-liked of Spanish directors. I don't know that many Spanish directors, but I like him a lot. I, I was interested to watch Crie Cuervos, uh, which means raise ravens, I guess. Uh, the movie stars Geraldine Chaplin, which, who was featured in another Spanish language film, not all about my mother, uh, talked to her, talked to her, as well as Anna Torrent. Uh, so yeah, I'm interested to check this out and see what we think. And before we begin, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. Not the best first impression of sex. Definitely not the best first impression. Oh, she doesn't even acknowledge her. This better not be yet another Taming of the Shrew. But what happened to her mom? Is her mom just a ghost wandering about? Are we actually still in A Turn of the Screw? Okay, so she is actually there. Okay, fine. Good. <sighs> Oh, boy. Children do be experiencing death in movies that I watch on this channel. Children do be pushing up right against the precipice of death. Fanny and Alexander. Cria Cuervos. Uh, the Learning Tree. The Brood. <clears throat> This is a weird thing to admit. I have always found Geraldine Chaplin very attractive. <laughs> On the Geraldine Chaplin to Julia Christie spectrum, I probably fall more on the Geraldine Chaplin side. <laughs> Why? Cuando entréis en la habitación, lo primero besáis a vuestro padre. Okay, so this is the funeral. But what happened to... Comprendido, Ana? Her mom. Is her mom just a ghost wandering about? Are we actually still in A Turn of the Screw? Yeah, mom is dead. And what an interesting way to encounter her mother. And she doesn't come back in a ghastly way. She doesn't come back in a comforting way either. She just tells her she she needs to close the refrigerator. Vamos, Ana. <laughs> I'm loving the look of this movie already. <laughs> the use of darkness to just cut down the information is really, really nice. Okay, so it was an affair. They're on like a military base. This is like a military family. And we're in the 70s, so we're going to be using zooms. <laughs> oh boy, I wasn't expecting this, but if there is like political or historical context that's necessary for understanding this film, I'm going to be at a loss. I love a skirt like that. Mom? It's her? What is- Oh my god. What am I- uh, I'm shook. I'm shook. I'm shook already. What the heck am I watching? No. Okay. Okay, that's fine. She's having just a little bit of a dissociative episode. That's completely fine. If she was going to- if she was having suicidal ideations, I would have not been happy. You would not believe... Maybe you know at this point, but you would not believe the amount of... Suicide-related films I've watched for this channel. <sighs> have they turned? Yo, intrigada. 
Le pregunté, ¿qué hay dentro? Mi madre sonrió y dijo, sí, es un veneno terrible. Con una cucharadita de estos polvos puedes matar a un elefante. Okay, I need to confirm whether or not her mother's name is Anna as well. Because, is this Anna's mother? Is this Anna in the future? Is this Anna projecting an image of herself in the future as her mother? ¿Por qué quería matar a mi padre? So that makes me think this is Anna, because Anna's father is dead. Okay, so is Geraldine Chaplin playing both Anna and her mother? Well, Anna in the future. And did she eat that candy because she wanted to kill herself in a small way? This is already too sad for me to handle. Um, this is already making me sad. Uh, obviously these are just like normal, everyday, real life things that we all have to deal with at some point in our life. Uh, death in the family, not understanding our parents' relationships, uh, generational gaps. But what's making me sad is the juxtaposition of the childlike perspective of Anna experiencing all these things for the first time as a child mixed with her adult kind of processing meditation reflection on these issues and those two kind of um, oppositional forces combining and melding together um, creates a portrait that is simultaneously naive and yet incredibly pained or hurt it feels so lived in and complex and in a incredible in an incredibly distilled medium like film you feel like you're cutting straight into the innermost life and secrets of a person when you watch a film i am in love with the color color palette of this movie this these incredible muted browns with just Anna's uh, red sweater piercing through, it feels it feels very autumnal, but it, it feels like uh, sepia without having to use sepia. Maite, Irene, y Anna. Ya sabéis que me hecho cargo de vuestra educación, siguiendo las instrucciones del testamento de vuestro padre. Que a partir de ahora estáis bajo mi tutela y mi protección. Bueno, yeah, I knew it. This takes place during Franco. I knew it. I have no context for that. I won't understand any of that. Ah, seeing your dead parents everywhere. So is this happening in the past, or is this also happening in the present? And is her dad a part of the um, Franco regime? Mira que gordito está Rene. Mira niño guapo. Búscame. I love these three sisters. I know all about that. Let's loop this with um, the city by dismemberment plan. Tengo un montón de cosas que hacer. De todas maneras, volveré antes que Rosa. Cuidar de vuestra abuela. 
Sobre todo tú, Irene. ¿Podemos ir contigo? No, ahora no. Baila. Do it. This is all I want out of my movies. Watching people dance. Nearly the only only time you can be close to certain characters will be happy, and if not happy, honest, is if they're in a scene of dancing in a film. This is literally all I want out of any movie I watch. Just fucking babies dancing. Pobrecita. Nadie te hace caso. Ana, vamos. Is she mute? Does she have like dementia or something? ¿Quieres ver las fotos? And they don't have to explain anything. You just get it and you understand that this is just where all of them are in their lives. I love... I can't believe they've done two musical sequences on top of each other, but they're communicating different things. I love this, like, generational difference that's displayed in their different tastes in music. And the difference in their physical relationship with the music one of them is using it to travel into the past. One of them is the others are using it to embrace the present. Incredibly economical and evocative storytelling. And I love this kind of in between space because it speaks to Anna's experience that she's like in between her siblings and her grandmother. She like wants to spend time with them both. She, for a moment, imperceptibly, was understanding the experience that her grandmother had. And that also speaks to why she's the one who can, like, see her mother and also sees herself as her mother when her siblings don't. This is part of the joy of child protagonists. It's something that I uh, really enjoyed in Tomboy, and also was frustrated by in Tomboy, that child, child, young protagonists are so unacquainted with their their feelings, their, their reasonings, and why they conduct themselves in the world. So they're, they're taking in the world. They're experiencing all these things, but they don't yet have the proper vocabulary to articulate what they're feeling. And so a real joy of watching these kind of child narratives is to go along on this journey with them and to try and bring yourself to their perspective, try and understand what they're feeling deep, deep, deep down inside because they won't give you the easy avenues of saying it out loud or saying it in a rational way for you to understand rationally. You have to open up your heart to to really experience child narratives. ¿Cómo estás, querida? <laughs> Llegas muy tarde. ¿Qué has estado haciendo hasta las... Oh, they're gonna fight. In this way, I like kind of also understand why children play house or uh, used to. Um, it is a way for them to play act um, and to manifest, to kind of articulate emotions. They see their parents produce emotions and they reproduce it by playing things like house, and through that, they can. Um, understand and fashion what emotions they're feeling. Okay, so another man in the infantry. Oh, Amelia is the woman that ha was having the affair with her husband, with her father. La misma promoción. Y estuvieron juntos destinados en Burgos. Amelia estaba con papá cuando papá murió. 
Ahí, 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 Ana los vio juntos en la cama. Ahora lo comprendo todo. Vosotras sois todavía unas crías y no os dais cuenta de la gravedad de ciertas cosas. No, I think they have an idea. ¿Cómo se te ha ocurrido semejante idea? No creo que Amelia es muy guapa, ¿verdad? Muy guapa. No entiendo cómo hay personas que dicen que la infancia es la época más feliz de su vida. En todo caso, para mí no lo fue. Ok, y Charlie Kaufman. Por eso, interminable. Triste. Donde el miedo lo llenaba todo. That's all very true. That's miedo all very true. That's all very, very true. Parece mentira que haya recuerdos que tengan tanta, tanta fuerza. Mamá estaba enferma en su dormitorio y que la habían traído del hospital to die para que home. se muriera en casa. Yeah. Oh. Oh god, look how pallid she is. It's very isolating as a child. You have no way of knowing if anyone else in the world is experiencing the same things as you. That's a lot. That's a lot. Se puede saber lo que haces aquí? Es que no tengo sueño, mamá. No tienes sueño. I like love how Has contado ovejas? Kind of nonchalant and dismissive. Her mother is when she's dreaming of her, when she's thinking of her. It's such a wonderful characterization because it's very, it's very commonplace. Like, I, I can't describe it. Her mother feels very warm and loving in their time when she was alive. During this time when she meets her after she's died, for like her mother. As a ghost, this feels like every day. This is another day with, uh, with her daughter like acting really strangely, and for the daughter, it's like, this is the only time. I I'm not sure if I'll ever see you again after this. It feels like the want, for somebody who's gone or somebody who's departed, that. They'll have this feeling of being just out of reach. It's wonderfully casual. I really love it. I really, really love it. I really, really love it. It's functioning in the same way as like Death of a Salesman. Death of a Salesman, like, kind of revolutionized staging for its time in like 1950 for kind of simultaneously portraying like uh, the past going into, or the present going into the past, going to fantasy, going into delusion. And it achieved it through like a balance of like lighting schemes and uh, uh, different s s uh, areas of the staging being utilized and, and a similar effect is being used in this film um, without like the technical distinctions we're meant to understand that we're living simultaneously in Anna's present and her reality but also in her interior mind and her uh, perceptions 
delusions and fantasies. Oh god. I love that framing. That's also something that uh, was used in uh, Bergman's in, in Fanny and Alexander. The kind of framing, the perception of kids, of children viewing their parents as uh, on the outside of door frames, on the outside of walls, that our vantage point, our view of their lives, is only like a sliver that we can capture at a distance. Mama! 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 And you kind of actually wonder if the mother was actually there, because she remarks that that Irene is always kicking off her covers, and when Irene, wake, Irene wakes up, her covers are drawn up to her. So, uh, did she never kick off her covers, or was that actually uh, her mother putting pulling them up for her? Not little Almond, that's her mother's story. Nope, you can't. Yeah, I knew that wasn't going to work out well. <laughs> oh no, you don't understand what's happening inside of Red. It can be very painful living in some of these characters' headspaces sometimes. Because they're all justified. They all act in a way that is rational and consistent with how they experience life. But it's so hard and so painful to feel the ways in which they can't articulate it to other people. All of these experiences would be unburdened by sharing them with another person, but when you can't, it, it feels really painful to be trapped inside with them. You, you really feel that pain of isolation. <sighs> I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. <laughs> My day. You suck. <laughs> oh god. Anna is a fashion icon. Icon. Don't have her mom come out of one. Weird. 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 It's like literally all of it is happening simultaneously. It's literally them visiting uh, the estate in the present with Paulina and them visiting in the past with Maria and Anselmo. It's all, like, superimposed on each other. This movie is so beautiful. It's so complicated. Such a peculiar beast. It just feels like childhood. It feels like all these things are happening simultaneously. Oh, God. <laughs> Me acuerdo cuando tú naciste. Qué disgusto le diste a tu padre. Dios le castigó. Tres hijos. Menudo padre. Cuervos. Con fuerzas. No podían sacarte del vientre de tu madre ni tirando con todas sus fuerzas. Symbolism. Es el pecho muy grande. Me lo enseñas. Oye niña, ¿tú qué te has creído? ¿Qué te has creído? Esto es un circo. Mom. Don't show up again, mom. Y cinco. Well, I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> Kid is having some dark thoughts. Kid is having some dark thoughts. Take that happy end. Do you think you have a, a monopoly on, on, on these kind of plot points? Sauna did it 40 years earlier? Aquí lo guardo. 
Es un veneno terrible. <laughs> it was baking soda. That's funny. Una cucharadita de estos polvos. <laughs> it was baking soda the entire time. That's funny. She's such a child. ¿Por qué no? Because it's baking soda, you little shit. ¿Qué haces tú con eso? Pon esa pistola donde estaba. Es mía. Papá me la regaló un día. Pregúntaselo a Irene. Bueno, bueno, dejaros de tonterías y poner eso donde estaba. Es como toda la vida me quieres. Sí, siempre me has querido, Paulina, y yo también. This kid walks in on a lot of love making, I gotta say. Es una Luger Parabellum calibre 38, sin duda. Anda, me la dejes ver. No tiene Mira, se tira hacia atrás el cerrojo y. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh god. <laughs> Spanish people do be living on another level though. I kind of like all these like proxies and that that Anna and the siblings all play because they they can't like live in their own emotions because they don't understand them yet. And so the only way they can express any emotion is in proximity by recreating events with their uh, with their aunt or oh, with the music. It's just baking soda, my dear. Also, weird, weird to step up to your aunt and be like, here, have a glass of milk that I prepared for you. Where else are you going to get a movie of a child trying to kill their aunt? In like, not a series of unfortunate events kind of way. Cinema. Cinema. Beautifully, beautifully shot film. I <sighs> really, really, really love the look of this movie. Oh, that's a fun little parallel. She just keeps on clearing the plates for her dead family. Is this gonna end with her actually killing her aunt? Because that is extremely fucked. I don't think she actually could have killed her aunt, right? But she believes that she did. It's an odd ending. There, there's a reading of this that uh, Anna is like a secret psychopath or whatever, and she's left unchecked. But I don't really think that's what this film is telling us. I think this film is telling us that she's a child, and... <laughs> it, 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 she doesn't recognize what consequences are, and if we all measured children by the metrics of adults who have an understanding of consequences of their actions and uh, and morals and obligations or whatever, like every child would be judged a psychopath. I think this is like an experience in uh, this is capturing an experience, a time in her life, like. The, the time of her vacation, or, or, or the summer break, maybe, this was, and kind of, like, indicating that for her, it feels like it's going to be an eternity, that she's locked in this, uh, like, uh, never-ending loop of being confined with her, her aunt, and not having her mother or her father, and wanting everybody to die, and feeling like it would go on forever. But the... The season passes and she goes back to school and as much as none of us are willing to acknowledge or prepared to accept, normalcy returns into our lives and we pass out of the difficult times. <laughs> uh, dusty roads, hard times, hard times and move on with our lives. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. This is, uh, this is a deeply affecting personal kind of, uh, depiction of childhood, of childhood confusion and innocence and ignorance and yeah, I, I kind of related a lot to the mutability of Anna, her inability to express a lot of turbulent things happening in, in inside of her to the degree which uh, in which she, she manifests it as a desire to um, 
see all of her all of her family and relations dead um yeah that that feels like childhood to me cool if you enjoyed this click the like button and subscribe for more old obscure and art house films and until next time keep watching good movies